The, the object here is, is, is you got to not have fear of your dreams and you got to be able to go ahead and want to pursue them at all costs. And even if you don't get what you want, there's like a famous quote, when you don't get what you want, you get experience. And that experience tells you something. That experience tells you to aspire to become something. And not many people end up trying to go after that because everybody has a different barometer of what they're willing to take. I think the first thing is you got to dream of something that you really, really want to do. Yeah. Right? And most people are sometimes, uh, you know, fearful of just living up to their dreams. So what was your dream? My dream was I wanted to go ahead and control my own destiny and not be at, uh, you know, at the whim of someone trying to put me down because of my appearance or who I was. Uh -huh. So for me it was I wanted to be successful and run my own company. Okay. So I didn't have to report to anybody. I didn't have to live up to the stereotypes. Success comes from wanting to win. So if you, if you gotta want it bad, no shortcuts, pure sacrifice. And that means in education, even though I learned education, not through school, but through the School of Hard Knocks, uh, the career, as well as family, uh, struggle. Those who dream and count on luck get surrounded by jealousy. Those who dream and let struggle drive them get surrounded by ambition. You have no, you have no idea how many times people have come up to me and uh, have actually read the headlines and said, wow, you got it pretty easy. And that kind of just, you know, it's kind of a slap in my face because, you know, there's a lot of struggle that went into that success. But that's the, that's the mindset some people choose to believe because they basically have that, 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 that uniform of why him versus why not me trying to go ahead and achieve the same success on my own by, by, by adapting the struggle. Right? Even look at social networking, right? I mean, look at how much has changed from Friendster to MySpace to Facebook to whatever else is out there. So that is the difference, right? I mean, you have to adapt to change. And that barometer sometimes runs out of fuel. And when you run out of fuel, you only have one option, which is you think and you end up deciding to accept what life gives you. And that's not what life is about. Life's more about beauty, about what you can accomplish, about what you can be proud of, of what your, what your inside is about, what you give to the world, what you give and can share with the world. So if there's anything to be learned from Brian or even the transaction yesterday is, is that everybody has the will to win. It's just a matter of whether or not you're willing to open it. So that's the first part I wanted to hit on, which was about being able to handle rejection. Two years into it, one of my board members actually said, hey, you know what, I think the company's growing a lot faster than you are. So imagine that, you're the founder, supposedly you're doing things right, revenues, profitability, the whole nine yards, everything's working in the right direction, but one of your board members just doesn't believe in you. So I had two options. I could react, I could start crying. Uh, don't do that. Uh, I could go ahead and react negatively, right? And then I just basically be instituting a fight, which doesn't make sense. Or I could basically accept the fact that that's how this one person feels and let that be the case, but only prove them wrong through performance. So if I had a th the thick skin to help me keep on the objective and continue winning. And that's what you have to do. Uh, I would say just, you know, I, I don't really know about balance until probably later in life. So part of my health, part of my 16 to 18, I mean, it might sound pretty like fast, but I lived, ate, slept in the office, forgot my family, forgot my youth, forgot all that stuff. So balance really didn't really kick in until later in my life. And what I realized after that is that- But isn't a part of being really successful too? Cause I, I felt the same thing. I mean, the first 10 years are like a were because when when you are trying to make it, it's hard to also have balance. Sure, but I think happiness comes when you have balance and success. And most importantly, I think the unique thing about me as an entrepreneur is that I stuck to what I was good at. And this is the third time, essentially, I'm in the same business, but I continued to innovate. And I got the chance three times to go ahead and uh, and have the success. Keep on learning. At 16, I dropped out of high school, but I never stopped learning. On the contrary, that's when I learned how to learn. Feeding the brain is a strong component to happiness. 
Never relax or rest on your laurels. Always look for, to give more than what's expected from you. Challenge yourself. Open your mind and keep it open. And remember, there's nothing you can't do. When others see obstacles, look for opportunities. Dream big, hustle harder. Another example of hunger uh, and hunger repeating itself. Uh, another founding employee of mine was actually uh, trying to be a doctor. And uh, you know, I guess I'm a bad influence, he dropped out. And uh, I actually hired him as one of my uh, imp founding employees for Blue Lithium. He worked his butt off. Uh, he you know, played an instrumental role at Blue Lithium. And then after we sold the company, uh, he actually started another one. And after two years, he sold it for $50 million. So that just kind of tells you hunger and the importance of hunger and the importance of actually surrounding yourself around people that will go all out when you need to, to actually connect the dots. But this young mogul comes from very humble beginnings. It's a good day for her today. She remembers a lot of stuff today. <laughs> My grandmother came with us from India and it was the seven of us uh, and we were crammed in a one bedroom apartment in the projects of San Jose. Growing up for me and going to the public school system was almost pretty much as torturous as you can imagine because, uh, uh, again, I was trying to adapt to this new world and I wore a turban and, you know, obviously I was the only one in school and it got sometimes violent, it got physical abuse, emotional abuse, and I got interested in what was still going on on the internet and the euphoria of the dot-com world. As a high school sophomore, he discovered the uncharted potential of online advertising and created a company called Click Agents. At the age of 16, I do my first deal. 90 days later, I had a real business, and then after that, it just skyrocketed. Three months after I turned 18, I sold the company for 40 million. Then in 2007, Gerbosh struck gold again when he created his second internet business. So Yahoo approached us, and we sold the company for $300 million. Gerbosh says his secret to staying grounded is his family. Put this over here. 